Hello, I'm Dr. Anesthesia. I would like to tell you about a study done by Drs. Colin M.W., Davies M.J., Hoyt C., Joyce L., Kilner R., Waters M.J. from the Department of Anesthesia, St. Vincent's Hospital, Melbourne, Victoria, Australia. It was published in Anna S. Intensive Care on January 2009. The title of the study is, Antibacterial Activity of Epidural Infusions. The incidence of epidural abscess following epidural catheterization appears to be increasing, being recently reported as 1 in 1,000 among surgical patients. This study was designed to investigate the antibacterial activity of various local anesthetics and additives used in epidural infusions against a range of microorganisms associated with epidural abscess. The aim was to determine which, if any, epidural infusion solution has the greatest antibacterial activity. Bupivacaine, ropivacaine and levobupivacaine crystals were dissolved and added to muller hitten agar in concentrations of 0 0.06, 0 0.125, 0 0.2, 0 0.25, 0 0.5 and 1. Fentanyl, adrenaline and clonidine were also mixed with agar in isolation and in combination with the local anesthetics. Using a reference agar dilution method, the minimum inhibitory concentrations were determined for a range of bacteria. Bupivacaine showed antibacterial activity against Staphylococcus aureus, Enterococcus faecalis and Escherichia coli with minimum inhibitory concentrations between 0.125 and 0.25. It did not inhibit the growth of Pseudomonas aeruginosa at any of the concentrations tested. Levobupivacaine and ropivacaine showed no activity against Staphylococcus aureus, Enterococcus faecalis and Pseudomonas aeruginosa, even at the highest concentrations tested, and minimal activity against Enterichia coli, minimum inhibitory concentrations 0.5 and 1 respectively. The presence of fentanyl, adrenaline and clonidine had no additional effect on the antibacterial activity of any of the local anesthetic agents. The low concentrations of local anesthetic usually used in epidural infusions have minimal antibacterial activity. While the clinical implications of this in vitro study are not known, consideration should be given to increasing the concentration of bupivacaine in an epidural infusion, or to administering a daily bolus of 0.25 bupivacaine to reduce the risk of epidural bacterial growth. Thank you.